All right, guys. It's noon, 73 Fahrenheit, Thursday. Thought I'd take you guys for a ride on my next call. First, uh, no cool was an easy one. It was just hermetic wire off. Today we're going to discuss non-invasive tests, so checking a charge without gauges. This house has been serviced by us year after year, so we're going to look at how I check this without putting on my gauges. Now for the new guys out there, I have uh, digital probes, but you can do this without digital probes and an app. You could actually do this with your analog gauges. There's two things you got to know. Design temperature differences. Okay, that's on the evaporator side. These are engineered to design a specific way. Without going into details, I'll show you after. Typically, on a properly running clean system with nominal airflow, 400 CFM per ton, our low side saturation, so the temperature of the coil, will typically be 35 degrees lower than your return air. So if your return air is 75, there's a good chance you're, when you connect your gauge on the saturation side, which would be in the pink for 410 on your yellow jacket analogs, or green, will be 40. So return air, minus 35, typically gives you your saturation. So you know going into a house that if you take your return air temp and it's 75, before you even connect your gauges, you're expecting to see a saturation of 40. So that's how we determine our low side gauge. To go on the high side of things, there's a term we call CTOA, condensing temperature over ambient another engineered design. But this one's a little bit different because it varies. I'm used to Linux, so what we're gonna see today is Linux. And to give you an idea, condensing temperature over ambient, when I say ambient, I mean your outdoor air. When you measure your outdoor air by the condenser, your condensing temp will be a specific amount higher. So on this unit, I would suspect to see a 14 to 16 sear. On Linux, your condensing temp in the pink on your analog gauge uh, for 410A or green for uh, R22 will typically be 10 above what is measured in the outdoor air. If we have an outdoor air today of 73, I expect before I even hook up my unit, if it's working correctly, that I'm going to see around 83 saturation, okay? So with those two details in hand, you could create in your mind an imaginary gauge to base your measurements off of. And with those measurements, we could then calculate an estimated subcool and superheat. So let's go inside. I'll show you how it's done and how we do it. All right, guys, not the best lighting here, but we're gonna begin our non-invasive check. So first thing I'm gonna do is I'm checking my static pressure, okay? I have my manometer hooked up. I also have my return psychrometer. And I have a supply probe right up there. So when I talk about uh, the return air being 35 lower typically. If you look here, 71 is my return bulb. So if I take in my head, if I was to take 71 and minus 35, my estimated saturation would be 36, which gives me a uh, pressure of 110. Okay, now the only time that would change is if you have an oversized evaporator and I'll know more once I get outside. If you have an oversized evaporator you're going to tend to see uh, a 30 degree split. Okay so return air minus 30. So this is the beginning of my delta. Right now it is uh, still in its latent cooling effect and it's just ramping up now. 
Okay, so we should see my split dropping. And the reason for the high split is simply because the CFM is lower. Remember, lower airflow, higher delta. More airflow, lower, de lower delta. So this is about to ramp up. I've connected my probes and I'm going to head outside. The first thing I want to do though is I want to check my total external static which is really low on this unit. So, I mean we got a huge drop on there, right? So, really low static. And this is a two-story home. So, let's head outside and see what we got for pressures. And here we are, my split's still dropping. All right, let's head on outside. Ooh, doesn't that look nice right about now? All right, guys, so I'm outdoors. I got an XC14, two ton, 24,000 BTUs. Um, and we have a 14 sear. So, right off the bat, let's talk about condenser temperature over ambient. Lennox, 14 sear and above, should be your high side saturation should be 10 above whatever the outdoor air is. So let's connect my line clamps and a thermometer to measure outdoor air. Okay, so we have our suction line and our liquid line clamps connected. No gauges have been connected yet. So far we've discussed our low side saturation being 30 or 35 degrees lower than the return air. I have my outdoor probe right there taking an outdoor air currently of 77 degree Fahrenheit. So based off our condenser temperature over ambient, and I'll show you guys that. So here we have our condenser temperature over ambient for Lennox. Typically we're going to be working on either 12 to 13 sear, so our condensing temperature over ambient would be 15 above the outdoor temperature. In our case, we're 14 to 16 sear, it should be 10 above. If you go to the Measure Quick app without even looking at that, if you know your outdoor air is 77, then you can estimate that your high side saturation in the pink or the green is going to be 10 above that. So we have 77, currently it's 87. That's the estimated pressures. So when I connect my analog gauges, I would expect my pressures roughly to be here, okay? With that being said, let's look. This is a TX system. So, typically TX valves, um, we're gonna charge by subcool, but you also wanna pay attention with your superheat. So, if we go back to what we discussed earlier, and we said, okay, our return air is going to be 35 below, uh, or sorry, our low side saturation is going to be 35 below our return air. That would give me a saturation right now of about 35. Okay, a typical superheat for these valves is anywhere from 10 to maybe on the high end of 20. Typically, we'd like to see around 12, but remember, this is total superheat. We're measuring it outside. So, I'm, if you take your line clamp temperature and you already know that your saturation is 35 below, which would be 35 saturation, and you minus the temperature of your suction line, that's going to give you your superheat. Right now, my suction line is 53. If I, my saturation is 35 and my suction line is 53, then I would expect that my superheat is about 18. Well, let's say around 17, 18, which would be fine for a TX valve. What Measure Quick does is it does this for you. If I click on my superheat, it's saying the value is 17. Okay, my design target could be anywhere from around there. So 17 for me on this Lennox would be good. Now we're gonna to move to our high side. On this unit here, which is a two ton, for a 75 degree day, 
it wants a subcool of approximately three. Okay. Simple math once again. We know our saturation on our high side has to be 10 above our outdoor air. Our outdoor air is currently measuring 77. Saturation, so the temperature of the refrigerant inside the condenser should be around 87. If I take that three subcool, I would expect to see that my liquid line should be three degrees lower than the saturation. So in this case, 87 being the saturation, I would expect to see my liquid line around 83. Right now my liquid line's 80, okay? So that's gonna give us about a seven subcool, which means it's slightly higher than it should be. Measure Quick does this math for you. It's telling me that based off these line temps, if I were to connect my gauge, it would roughly be around seven, okay? Another method with Lennox is approach. Lennox states that if it's over 65 and above, you could do an approach method. The approach on this one is four. So they're saying on a day like today, we're at 77, my approach should be four. Your approach is your outdoor air minus your liquid line. If I look here, my approach is bang on. That's also another way to check your charge on a Lennox without gauges. So right now my sub cooling is a little bit higher. What I'm gonna do now is we're gonna test the non-invasive check. So we just determined the charge without hooking up our gauges. Let's see how accurate that would have been. All right, guys, so here we see I've connected my gauges. We just did it earlier, a check without gauges. Now, let's look with the gauges connected. Look where my, this is real-time pressure. Right on the money. My saturation is exactly what we were estimating in our heads. We took our outdoor air, we added 10, and it was bang on. Our return air we said earlier it was around 35 36 it is right there on the money we said our superheat gave me an approximate value of 17 sorry let's get back on that screen we're at 16 our sub cooling earlier based off the values was around six or seven look where we're at guys so you can check systems without hooking up your gauges as long as you know two things design temperature differences and condensing temperature over ambient pretty cool here I've posted a non Lennox CTOA chart if you go off these numbers you'll always be accurate if you look on a system that is not Lennox. 13 to 16 sear, the condensing temperature ambient is 20. On a 17 sear and above, it will be 15. Okay, you can pretty much go by those numbers. If you're on a 10 to 12 sear, it'll be 25. If you're on a six to nine sear, it's 30. Lennox, a little different. They're a lower condensing temperature over ambience. So I thought that was really cool. I mean, I didn't have to hook up my gauges and I just showed you that, right? We're right on the money. My split, right on the money. My airflow, right on the money. You guys out there can do this with analog gauges. The only difference between the app is the app does the math with you, for you. But this isn't brain, this isn't uh, nuclear uh, physics here. This is simple addition and subtraction. Simple math, guys. Know your design, engineered designed numbers, 
and you can check one without gauges. Doesn't matter if it's piston or subcool. If you need to check the charge on subcool, use your CTOA. Take your line temp, minus the two, minus your saturation and your liquid line, that's gonna give you your subcool, okay? Um, so I thought I'd share this. That's just a demonstration on how we do things non-invasively. Um, if I could do a video with some analogs, I'll do that as well. But I mean, you see it right here. So I'm gonna call this system good. It's right on the money. I mean, it's a little higher than it should be in terms of subcooling, but we're okay. Same thing with our approach. If you like the video, guys, like, subscribe, leave a comment down below. I'm going to finish up this maintenance and get on with the next one. Alright, so I'm just finishing up here, guys. But I need to stress the importance of this because, you know, if you're going to a system year after year, and I'm talking, you got maintenance contracts and you're going there year after year, you don't need to connect your gauges, right? Look how much time it saves you. If you could just do the math in your head, not connect your gauges, not contaminating, not pulling out. Now you have the extra time needed to do a thorough cleaning as well. So something to really think about. I know it blew up uh, for a while um, with uh, Jim Bergman's podcast on it, which I'm going to leave the link in the description. He goes really into detail in it and makes a very good case as to why we don't need to connect every time um, so try it out the next time you're on a call okay use those numbers I gave you and in the top of your head set your own targets before you connect and then when you connect see what it's like right now I have to make something clear if you get numbers that are off right so if you do this math in your head and it doesn't seem right like holy jumpins my superheater my sub cools way off that's when you connect your gauge okay but if you got a good temperature split and you got good superheat and good sub cool estimated targets and you're reaching those with this non-invasive method you don't need to connect i mean everything's fine spend your time cleaning spend your time talking to the customer all right so let's wrap this up Go for a dip. Like a bird on a tree I'm just sitting here